Hello everyone, this is uh, George here from Data Academy. Welcome to a new tutorial. Today, we are going to talk about automated machine learning. In specific, we're going to walk through the process of using AutoSK Learn to do automated machine learning. So let's get started. We're going to start by, as always, importing all the libraries. And next, we're going to read in the same data set that we used last time. So it is the Ionosphere data set. And then the same data set, you can see there are 35 columns with the first 34 columns being the features and the last column being the labels. So we're going to split the data into features and labels and also the training and test sets as before. And now we're going to build a model using sklearn. So we can just say auto sklearn dot classification dot auto sklearn classifier. Uh, we can use this class because we are doing a classification task here. And it is important to specify two specific arguments here. So number one is time left for this task. This is basically the total amount of time you are going to allow auto sklearn to run, to run for. And the second one is for individual model building uh, for each model configuration. How long do you want it to run for? So overall, I'd like this to run for five minutes. So that's 60 seconds times five times five. And uh, for each individual experiment, I'm going to allow this to run for a minute. And then we can just uh, uh, do a model.fit uh, to, to start the experiment. And once this is done, then you can show the, uh, uh, the results by using a sprint, sprint statistics method on the auto machine learning model object, like so. And then you can see a bunch of uh, statistics, including the best validation score. So it seemed like this is a little higher than what we got uh, last time manually, right? So if you check here, this is 94%. So maybe this is a little better than before. That's interesting. Um, and then we can also show the models by doing this. And um, uh, what you can find here is, for example, uh, for each model, you have the validation score. And you also have um, the details regarding the, the choice of the, the algorithm. In this case here is MLP. And um, also the details regarding the, uh, the data pre-processing, the feature pre-processing pipeline information that auto SK learn used and um, we can check the uh, the cross validation results by importing the data into a pandas data frame this way it is nicer for us to review everything and then we can look at uh, you know all the uh, the test uh, results so we uh, we are specifically interested in the best performing model. So we're going to just uh, grab that uh, highest score and correspondingly, we are going to find that model and we can see all the other uh, results reg regarding this uh, best performing model. So this model, it is using this algorithm. So this is actually a neural network model and uh, a bunch of other information regarding the pre-processing steps used. So now, uh, we want to, uh, to save the model so that uh, later on, if we want to reuse the model, we can do this uh, uh, very easily by loading in the uh, serialized or the save the model. So this is how we save the model using, by using the joblib uh, library. And uh, we can reload the model this way. Finally, we're going to do a cross-validation, a tenfold cross-validation on the model as well, so that we can compare this auto sklearn generated model with the, uh, the model we built last time uh, manually. And um, if we do this, we're going to get this result. So it seems like this is uh, actually a little worse than what we were able to get manually last time. If you look at the standard deviation, it's also a little higher, which means that this is actually a little worse as well, right? Because there is a more uh, basically variance um, or fluctuation in terms of the results. So that's uh, not uh, very good either. 
So then this is the, uh, the final result, 93%. Um, regarding the auto escular model and you might be wondering why this is a little different than what we saw just now uh, just now over here uh, that is basically because here is uh, the cross validation it is done on the training set only however um, here we just uh, did every we just uh, did the cross validation using all the data so that's the, the difference there. And also the other thing to notice is that we did the tenfold cross validation like this. And also um, I'm setting the n jobs, number of jobs to be uh, minus one so that uh, uh, by doing the cross validation, we are actually going to use all the available CPU cores, uh, which makes things uh, faster if you do have a multi-core CPU. Okay, so that is everything. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.